Sometimes people try to hide their email address on the web by adding extra characters or making it look a little bit different. So I'm going to show you how you would go and gather email addresses off the internet by showing you how to write an email address scraper in Python. So we have a machine right here and we have a web page. So this web page has four or five different email addresses right here. You can see some of them have um, special characters thrown in, um, other things. So if we look at the page source, review the page source, you can see down here there are extra characters added, um, replacement characters, and down here in the bottom you have even special HTML codes that convert to characters. So let's look at how we would resolve this problem. So now I have a terminal. Let's create a program. So we'll call this an email the PY. So what I want to do with my program is first start the interpreter. I want to import a couple of libraries. Now I'm using Python version 2.7, I believe. And um, URL lib in version 2.7 is different than in 3, so you do want to make sure you update to the correct version. Uh, URL lib 2 is what I use here. I want to import also sys, and I want my regular expression library. All right. First, I want to load the URL. I'm going to grab that from the command line. So whatever my first argument after my program is going to be what I assume the URL is. I'm not going to do any error checking, but normally you would do that. So here we would do URL lib 2.url open. And we're going to open our sys.argv1. And that will be the first argument after the program. And it'll assume it's a URL. It'll open it up. And then I'm going to grab the page. And that's going to be URL read. All right. So what do I need to do? Well, let's look at a couple of things we're going to think about. So I'm going to do some regular common replacements. And look at doing special characters. Replacements. And then I will actually just do my search. So let's do the search first just to see what we get. So I'm going to use some kind of a search pattern. Some of my patterns going to be, um, and this is, you just decide what you believe email address will have. So I think maybe it's some kind of white, um, some character, uh, maybe some digits, uh, maybe the underscore character, and I'll have more than one, one or more of those. Then I have the at character, and then I'll have um, maybe the same kind of thing. Score, and maybe you have dots in there. I don't know. You could decide what you believe would be a valid email address. Let's throw a dot over here for fun. Okay, and then I want to make sure there's at least one dot. And let's make sure there's more of these characters. One dot, and I'm going to then end with the same thing. Let's see, uh, slash D, slash W, slash D. Uh, make sure the underscore you can have extra dots if I want. And then eventually you have this pattern. So this is my regular expression, pa regular expression pattern for the email addresses. It could be different. You can decide what you believe they might show up as. This is what we're going to do. Now I'm going to get my regular expression data back. So my data comes back as, I'm going to do a find, find all. I'm going to find everything with a pattern in the page. And then I just wanted to print them all out. So for address, and these might not be all addresses, but they should be. I want to just print the address. All right. So I didn't do any replacements. It's just going to find standard email addresses that match my pattern. I'll set the permissions on my program. 
and then I'll run it. So email and HTTP colon slash slash server.example.com and it comes back with alice.example.com. That was good. But if you remember, there were other email addresses here as well, like the Bob at and then Charles at and then this at. So different kinds of ats. And then even you get picked up. All right. So let's go in and modify our program again. So common replacements would include the underscore. People use that a lot. So do page equals page dot replace place. I want to replace everything with a underscore dot underscore because that's what people do. And replace it with just a straight dot. That looks good. And uh, I'm going to cut and paste this a few times. <clears throat> and let's look at a couple different um, dot options. So maybe we'll do it without without the underscores with a space there. Uh, maybe we'll do a lowercase dot. If you want to do that, uh, maybe we'll use parentheses dot. I think this gets all of my examples that I had earlier. So let's now do the same thing with the at. So change these all to ats, at, and at, and at, and at. And change these symbols from at to, or from dot to at. All right. Now, this is doing a few replacements on the entire page. Anywhere these things are found in the page, it will try to replace them first. And then we go do our search. So next out here. And we run this again. And now it comes up with four addresses instead of just one. All right, let's go back in here and try to get a little bit better. Those special characters. Special characters were in the form of basically had an ampersand. A, uh, um, what, a hash mark, some kind of digit, maybe one or more, and then it had a semicolon at the end. So that's what it, we, were, we want to look for. So let's search for those and replace all those. So do you read data, like read data. So our data from our search. And we'll do a regular search. So we're going to grab one at a time. And we want to find anything that starts with the ampersand then the hash mark, and then um, one or more digits. And we want to keep these things separate, so we'll put a set of parentheses in here. That basically says that this is going to be treated as a special group later, and we're going to search the entire page. All right, so if we find anything, then we'll have a value in read data. If not, we won't. So while there's something in this read data, we want to figure out what the character it represents is. So the character is going to be a ch, and we're going to do the chr because we're going to convert from an integer into a character. But we need to get it into an integer first. So we're going to typecast this read data and group one. So group one will be whatever shows up in the parentheses above in that search. And so we want to take that change it into an integer, and then from there we want to change it into a character. All right, then we want to replace all the instances of whatever we found with the new character. So we want to replace a read data group zero. Group zero is the entire matched regular expression with the character that we just barely created. And after we've done this, we want to do another search to see if we want to stay oops, in our while loop. So all right here, and we can indent that in. So this thing will go through and find everything that matches that pattern and replace it with the character that's supposed to mean. So let's exit out and try the same thing again. And this time it finds one more because it finds Eve's. 
Because Eve, even though she tried really hard to hide her email address, she didn't do a good job. So you can look at the page source again, and it found all of these characters down here. There's a, looks like four unique ones that it found and replaced and turned back into regular characters. And that is how you write a scraper for a single page. At this point, all you need to do is modify your code, change your code, so this is all within one function, and then you can just pass in the URL as the function variable, and then cause it to go from page to page looking for URLs inside of URLs, jump from page to page, and find email addresses. So remember, putting your email address on the web means someone might grab it and they might use it for spam.